coming to get you. I see they coming to get you. You better watch your baby for they motherfucking split you. It's no secret that the city of New Orleans has been ranked the murder capital of America multiple times throughout the years. One of the reasons contributing to those rankings are wars in the streets. One particular war in question has so many moving parts that I may just forget to say some shit. Let's get into it. In June of 2013, resulting from a three-year investigation by the New Orleans Gang Task Force, the state of Louisiana would charge control, a.k.a. Black and 19 co-defendants with a range of crimes and furtherance of gang activity in association with a criminal enterprise known as 3NG. Black was charged with conspiracy to commit racketeering, conspiracy to distribute that diesel in furtherance of gang activity, and conspiracy to distribute that hard in furtherance of gang activity. Before these charges would be brought up on Black, a murderous turf war existed between 3 and G and the Yo. It wouldn't be long before Black would begin to establish himself as the big dog of 3 and G. In September of 2002, the NOPD would respond to a homicide in the 3300 block of Thalia Street. Upon arriving to the scene, the NOPD would find the victim, Alexis, a.k.a. Slam, riddled with bullets, face down with several 9mm casings nearby. James Davis, a longtime resident of the Yo, who was facing time himself on an open charge, would finger black as the shooter. James Davis would also give the NOPD a recorded statement in which he would identify Black from a photographic lineup. Marcello Jones, aka Big Marty, another hitter and hustler, was serving a 30-year sentence on drug charges. Marty, who was hoping for favorable consideration on his Rule 35 sentence reduction, would state that Black was bragging about killing Slam. Now that you have somewhat of an understanding of who Contrell Hickerson is, let's move on. In the grimy streets of the N.O., it's either stepped or get stepped on. As newer generations of young killers would stomp the streets of New Orleans, they would all try to outdo the killers that came before them. As what would be the case with the notorious 3NG versus Calio Project War. Three and G would have a host of key players. Rico Jackson, aka Freaky, started pumping on Three and G in or around 2000. Word on the streets was that Jerome Hampton, aka Man Man, had Freaky shook with promises to crush him. Freaky, who would eventually take a hot ass plea deal, was no stranger to squeezing. In fact, he was directly involved in the murders of B out the Yoke, Junkie John, Corey out the Calio, and the infamous murders of Magnolia Shorty and Man Man. Man Man wouldn't be the only op of 3NG that would be out the yo. Them boys of 3NG wanted Jamal Maul Smith, aka Sicko, bad for allegedly downing AP. 3NG swore they had that boy Maul one day round the courthouse. Rat and T-Red jumped out dumping shots. The girl that Maul was with would break camp. Needless to say, Maul would live to survive that shooting. So much shit went down with this wall that this app won't be in chronological order. I'ma run it to you based off each act that was pulled off. Let's move on. One really fucked up situation about this whole war was Washington McCaskill, aka Big Wash, smashing Charles Anderson, aka Buck. He smashed the man, talking about Buck was the weakest link that he was gonna snitch. All for him to turn right around and snitch himself? Now tell me that ain't some fucked up shit.
Then look, them dicks was all over the place with this wall, charging niggas with shit they ain't do. Now peep this. A double shooting took place in the yo on December the 18th of 2011 around 4.45 p.m. Two vehicles stalked Emmett Allen as he was walking through the project. Ultimately, gunmen would open fire in the 3300 block of Erato Street. Emmett would be critically wounded from that shooting. A young girl would unfortunately lose her life. The NOPD originally arrested and charged Narkey Hunter in connection with the shooting of the toddler. Charges were later dropped after video surfaced confirming Marquis alibi at a bar during the murder. Months later, the NOPD would charge Tyrone T-Bone Knockham and Terry T. Red Oni. They will be wrong again about the shooting. The NOPD would ultimately end up charging Dimitri Michi Robinson, Darius Smooth Knox, Kendall Yeezy Livingston, Christopher J. Collins, and Larry Larry Love Scott, all alleged members of 3NG for the crime. In 2007, Emmett's brother Arthur Dow was only 18 when he was gunned down on May 25th of that year, just blocks away at the corner of 2nd and South Miro Street. In December of 2016, Jeremiah Lee, aka Zipper, allegedly gunned down Kareem Dow on St. Andrew Street. At the time of his death, Kareem was in a wheelchair due to his left leg being amputated as a result of a previous shooting. Zipper will be hit up himself on January 15th of 2017, less than a month after Kareem was killed. That shooting had taken place in the 2400 block of South Durban Street, about a half a mile from where Kareem was killed. Before he was killed, Kareem had been shot several times, including the day after Thanksgiving of 2016, when he and three others were shot on Magnolia and Martin Luther King. Again, the NOPD wouldn't have a clue as to what was going on. They would blame both the Bird Gang and the Yo for the 2017 shooting. Darius Knox, one of five men indicted in the infamous 2011 shooting of Kiara Holmes, pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit second-degree murder and received a 27-year sentence under the terms of a plea deal. Kendall pleaded guilty to manslaughter, conspiracy to commit first-degree murder, and other charges months later. He would receive a 20-year sentence under a plea agreement. It's all because 18 of the 20 men in the alleged 3NG gang pleaded not guilty to charges of murder, racketeering, and drugs and weapons. Police are still looking for these two suspects, Kentrell Hickerson and Kevin Lynch. Warrants are out for their arrest, and when they are captured, they'll each be held on a $2 million bond. WDSU anchor Rachel Wolf was in court today and has details. 18 alleged members of the 3NG gang were arraigned in court today, all pleading not guilty to the crimes they are charged with. It is the beginning of what many expect to be a long and complicated criminal proceeding. Two dozen members of law enforcement were in and around Judge Camille Burris's courtroom as she read a 29-count indictment. The state says the 3NG gang ran a criminal drug enterprise that, quote, promoted a climate of fear through violence, and that half of the suspects are responsible for 10 murders in the area, including the killings of toddler Kiara Holmes and rapper Megnolia Shorty. Documents detail how members of the gang allegedly bragged about violent acts and used illegal firearms to prevent competition. The majority of the defendants did not have an attorney so the public defender's office entered pleas of not guilty on their behalf. But moving forward, they will have to find counsel elsewhere. We cannot represent the 12 men who are without counsel. Um, you know, if there are two defendants, we can represent one, and the one would go to our conflict division, and that would be it. But in this case, we can't represent any of them because we're conflicted from all of them. The deadline for all defendants to have counsel is July 31st.
On your side outside Criminal District Court, Rachel Wolf, WDSU News. Shit, bruh, this shit is wild. And in regards to black, damn near like the whole Green G jumped on that boy case. That's what them boys was doing, jumping from case to case in order to get time reductions. That boy T-Bone, however, would tie black to two more murders, Omar Bro and Darrell Pooler. Even with that, he had given different stories surrounding the actual events that had actually taken place. What really tripped me all the way out, how Rabbit got on the stand mentioning Lil. Lil locked up, my nigga. Why you dragging Lil name in that shit? Hey, bruh, stay plugged for part two coming soon.